Hi everybody. Let's talk about Apache Kafka, which is a distributed publish subscribe messaging system that receives data from disparate source systems, you know, various source systems and makes the data available to target systems in real time. And Kafka is written in Scala as well as in Java and it's often associated with real time event stream processing for big data and Kafka brokers. Uh, Kafka is a distributed, you know, data infrastructure, as we said, and this implies that there's some kind of node that can be duplicated across a network such that the collection of all of those nodes functions all together as a single Kafka cluster. And that node is called a broker. And it's a durable messaging system. You know, a messaging system sends messages between processes, applications and servers. And it's a software where topics can be defined. You know, think of a topic as a category and applications can add, you know, process and reprocess records. And it's a database. It provides asset guarantees and it's used in hundreds of companies for mission critical deployments. So, you know, there's also the zookeeper, you know, that you can start and then you can also type the command Kafka console producer on the command line. And this will help the user read the data from the standard inputs and write it to the Kafka topic. And like we said, it's an event store and stream processing platform and it's open source that's developed by Apache Software Foundation and it's written in Java and Scala, like we said, and the project aims to provide a unified high throughput, low latency platform for handling this real time big data feeds. And your local environment must have Java 8 plus, you know, installed. And once the services have successfully launched, you'll have a basic Kafka environment running and ready to use. Well, Zookeeper is used in distributed systems for service synchronization and as a naming registry. So when working with Apache Kafka, Zookeeper is primarily used to track the status of nodes in the Kafka cluster and maintain a list of Kafka topics and messages. And you'd be wondering why is it so why is it so popular, you know, Kafka? It has an operational simplicity and it's easy to set up and use. It is easy to figure out how Kafka works. But at the same time, the main reason Kafka is very popular is its excellent performance. It's really performing well and Kafka is a, you know, great distributed system with servers, clients that communicate via high performance TCP network protocol. And I mean, if we look at IT, would it be easy? And it's not new. And so if you're new to Kafka, it can be difficult to grasp the concept of Kafka brokers, clusters, partitions, topics, and logs, because you'll also need to pick up, you know, producers and consumers stores and retrieve messages from Kafka clusters. So you know, from an IT standpoint, it's not so easy. An Offset Explorer, you know, that was once known as a Kafka tool, it's a graphical user application for managing and using Apache Kafka uh, registered trace trademarks uh, clusters. And it provides an intuitive UI that allows one to quickly view objects within the Kafka cluster, as well as the messages stored in the topics of the cluster. And you see in comparison, you know, IBM MQ, you know, a similar one. And if you compare the two, IBM MQ and Kafka, as a conventional message queue, IBM MQ has more features than Kafka. And IBM MQ also supports JMS, uh, making it a more convenient alternative to Kafka in certain situations. And Kafka on the other side is better suited to large data frameworks such as Lambda and Kafka also has connectors and provides stream processing. So they have their advantages and disadvantages and some prerequisites, you know, for professionals who want to take up Apache Kafka certification online training. It's good to have prior knowledge of any messaging system, you know, Java or any other programming language and, you know, Linux and Unix based systems. The good thing is that it's open source and it's providing this framework for storing, reading and analyzing streaming data. And so being open source means that it's essentially free 
to use and it has a large network of users and developers who contribute towards updates, new features, and offering support for new users. And Kafka in a, sim Kafka in a simple way is a commit log with a simplistic data structure. And the Kafka producer API, you know, consumer API, the streams API, and connect API can be used to manage the platform. And this cluster with Kafka, its architecture is made up of brokers, consumers, producers, and zookeepers. And you'll find this is done all in a very fast, reliable, persisted fault tolerance and zero downtime manner. You know, Kafka offers, offers a pub sub and queue based messaging system. And you find producers send the message to a topic and the consumer can select any one of the message systems according to their wishes. Well, Bootstrap, you know, servers is a comma separated list of host and port pairs that are the addresses of the Kafka brokers in a Bootstrap Kafka cluster that a Kafka client connects to initially to the Bootstrap itself. And Kafka broker, a Kafka cluster is made up of multiple Kafka brokers and each Kafka broker has a unique ID and number and it's optimized for high ingress data streams and uh, relays and it's a durable message broker where applications can process and reprocess stream data on disk and bootstrap servers are a list of host port pairs that are used to establish the initial connection to the Kafka cluster and these servers are just used for the initial connection to discover the full cluster membership and Apache Kafka really it's a streaming platform that enables the development of applications that ingest a high volume of real-time data and it was originally built by the geniuses at LinkedIn and it's now used at Netflix, Pinterest, Airbnb just to name a few and Kafka you know is free that's a good thing and it you know if you look at there's some new approaches and uh, the new approach would involve wrapping existing Zookeeper servers in Kubernetes services and then does one-for-one -one server pod replacements using the same Zookeeper ID. And this requires just one rolling restart to reconfigure existing ZK instances, you know, Zookeeper instances, then shutting down the servers one by one. And Hadoop Zookeeper is also a distributed application that follows a simple client server model where clients are nodes that make use of the service and servers are nodes that provide the service and multiple server nodes are collectively called zookeeper ansible and it's used for a variety of uh, applications like building etl pipelines data synchronizations real-time streaming and much much more and in closing we can use kafka as a message queue or a messaging system but as a distributed streaming platform Kafka has several other usages for stream processing or storing data and it's a key element that allows the persisted connection between the client and the front end to be tolerant to back-end failures and Kafka is storing all messages or streams of records that are published to it Thank you for listening. This brings us to the end. My name is Ian Hillman. Comment, rate and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.